Our view of the universe is based scientifically on the standard model. The standard model has four uh, forces. There is weak force, strong force, uh, electromagnet force, and gravity. Electromagnetic force and weak force come together at very high temperatures. Um, at extremely high temperatures, we're talking in the millions of degrees, weak force, electromagnetic force, and strong force come together. The problem with the grand unified theory is gravity. Uh, gravity does not seem to exist, which seems kind of counterintuitive since Galileo and Newton, uh, we've been studying it and it's mathematically predictable as to how it works, but we don't know why it works. In fact, for 500 years we've been trying to figure out why it works and we still don't know why it works. To unite gravity with electromagnetic strong and weak, you need the theory of everything. The theory of everything would include all four of those. The problem with everything is that the universe is accelerating. Two groups of scientists were trying to figure out uh, how gravity would work in the standard model. Uh, if the Big Bang happened, then with gravity, there would be a, uh, a gravity would be pulling everything in, there would be a deceleration, and then everything would be back into a big squeeze. So these two parties were trying to figure out how uh, gravity is affecting them and how long we had in the universe before everything started getting pulled back. What they found was the exact opposite. Instead of being pulled back by gravity, there is an anti-gravity force that's pushing the universe to acceleration, which is not part of the standard model, which leads us back to Einstein and his cosmological constant. He predicted that there would be a force that's pushing on the universe that would be an anti-gravity to gravity. And he didn't like that idea, so he threw it away and considered it one of his biggest blunders. Then these two groups found out that the universe was accelerating, and his cosmological constant is now proven to be true. The anti-gravity force uh, has been shown to be the void itself. So the void is energy, and according to the calculations of the accelerating universe theory, it is 74 percent of the energy of the cosmos, whereas the visual, visual universe that we see the, the universe, the, gra uh, the galaxies, the stars, that everything we can see only adds up to 4%. So now, the theory of everything has to include nothing, because the nothing is something, and it has to be accounted for. All of the physics of the standard model uh, are based on scientific study of the physical universe, but the physical universe now includes the void, or nothing, and it has to be included or it's not a theory of everything. Another problem with the universe is time. Time is happening now, 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 now. It's going from one, one time to another time. It's going from the beginning, the Big Bang, to the ending time. It's happening now. It is not being explained by the standard theory. So the standard theory is going to have to explain gravity. It's going to have to explain anti-gravity void, and it's going to have to explain time or it's not a theory of everything. A theory of everything must include everything. The other problems with the universe are the fact that the universe is not three-dimensional. If you look at the universe through the telescopes that we have that can see the vast universe and vastness of space, uh, you will, if the universe was three-dimensional, the Big Bang would have happened, and then everything, the cloud, would have expanded from universe central. But that's not what we see in the telescopes. What we see in the telescopes is 26 billion years of, of light, billion light years of the universe, and all the galaxies are spread out very evenly within. So there's no center, there's no end to the universe. It just keeps going, almost like it's infinite. Uh, the next problem with the universe is time. If you look out into space, uh, you see things as they are when they when the light came from them. So you're actually looking back in time, and the farther back you look, the farther back in time you're looking. Um, if you take the space-based telescopes and look back 12, 13 billion years, you're going to see all the way back to the beginning of the universe, back to the Big Bang. Uh, the strange thing about this is that when you look in that direction, straight back 12, 13 billion years, you see what's going to be the Big Bang. And if you look in that direction for 12 to 13 billion years, you're going to see the Big Bang. 
Same with that direction, same with that direction. It's all around us, coming at us like we're surrounded by it. It's uh, not three-dimensional. Something is wrong with the universe. That has to be explained. The third problem with the universe is the uh, cosmic background radiation. It's radiating all around us. It's going through the whole universe. Uh, NASA did a took a picture of it. They, uh, you, can, you can't see it with visible light, but you can see it with microwaves. So they, they took a satellite and they looked at every point in the celestial sphere and they took a picture 13.7 billion years ago of the Big Bang is what they did. They took a photograph of the Big Bang. And when they looked at it, they found that the, there's, there's hot patches and cold patches. There's green and yellows and there's blues. The blues are void. The, dark, the, the green patches are energy. So it seems that the energy and the void were created in the Big Bang at the same time, which means that matter from the Big Bang uh, was, did, didn't explode into an already existing infinite universe. The void and matter exploded together and have been ex expanding and accelerating since then. So the theory of everything must include everything. So it must include electromagnetic force, it must include weak force, it must include strong force, it must include and explain gravity, it must include and explain anti-gravity or the void, it must include and explain time, and it must include and explain the non-three-dimensional aspects of the universe.